Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and unfortunately I don't have Chris with me, but I do have the 2023 Honda CRV Sport Touring, meaning we are rocking the hybrid powertrain top trim of this Honda, and as you're seeing me depart presently, rolling out of here, these are my very, very first impressions of the car. This is the very first time I'm driving it. I've driven the normal gasoline motor, but not the hybrid. And I'm excited about the hybrid because it should be quite nice, quite smooth. Of course, Honda's promising all the goodies, saying this is the best CRV ever. And I'm here to tell you if that's baloney or not. But upon very, very first impressions, I am quite impressed. I like this interior. I like the dark classiness. I think it really elevates the look of the car. A little bit of cross stitching here. I apologize for not heading out to do. Oh, this is not going to be good. Stepping off. They promise more power from the just hybrid motor. And we seem to be getting that. Is our engine on? Holy cow, that's remarkably <laughs> refined. I didn't even notice the engine come on there. It's pretty good. One of the really impressive things with Hondas recently, the new Civic. And pretty, I mean, most Hondas for a while, but especially the last few years, is how crisp everything has been. Now we're hearing that engine running in there, but listen to this. Every little knob, you can't even hear that because it's so refined, but it's a very strong, confident uh, feel to just about everything in the car. And <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty impressed right upon first impression. First impression press if you will. When we drove the EXL non-hybrid version a few weeks ago, my biggest complaint is probably just the power of that car. It's not very strong, not very powerful. You really had to wring the motor out to get it to do aggressive type stuff. Now, I don't think that's going to be an issue for most casual CRV drivers, but this model promises to be more powerful and more satisfying in all sorts of driving situations and efficient as well. 43 miles per gallon combined, I think for the, maybe it's 40 combined for the front wheel drive model, 43 in the city, and then about three miles per gallon below that here for the all wheel drive model, which this top of the line trim is all wheel drive. And I think most people are probably gonna be getting all wheel drive. That is really darn efficient for a vehicle of this size. Ooh, look at that. The new CRV is supposed to have a wider field of view, and I am seeing that. I feel like I'm sitting very close to the windshield, very far forward. They've repositioned the mirrors a bit in order to add some visibility. I'm seeing that as well. The mirrors feel very down and out of the way. I realized I better get some air on my camera so we don't overheat. I like having physical climate controls, a vehicle I've barely spent any time in, and I'm able to very quickly and easily turn on the climate while doing driving like this. I think that is a plus. I gotta say, it's seeming pretty quiet in here. Got a lot of highway noise going around us. In fact, look at that. Listen, you can't even hear the cars going by next to us. That is remarkable. Listen to this when I open the window. Is this double pane glass? It is double pane. Okay, all right. So, sport touring here, double pane glass, remarkably, remarkably quiet inside. Do we have any sort of battery screen? Power flow. There we go, showing us our fuel economy, our range, and the amount of battery in there. Amount of charge, I should say, in the hybrid battery. This should be a good chance to try the stop and go. Oh, interesting. So I'm in B mode right now, which is supposed to be the stronger regenerative braking, and you can't have the cruise control set in that. So now we're set. 25 miles per hour is the minimum cruise control. I'm going to bump that up to like 50. And now the vehicle is driving for me in stop and go traffic on the highway, and I like that. See, it's actually getting up to speed pretty aggressively. And then slowing down, slowing down. I 
I actually think it's kind of nice that Honda routed us into stop and go traffic because realistically you want a car that's going to be good in this type of situation. You don't want just to have a car that's going to go out on beautiful mountain roads and be able to drive quickly. How often are you really doing that? This is what you're really doing with most of your driving if you live in a, a larger city or you do some sort of commuting. And this is handling it very, very well. I'm not touching the gas or the brake. It's a very natural adaptive cruise control. Hmm. About elbow comfort. This goes out very far. I like that and a good amount of squish. Ooh, not a lot of squish on the left side though. That's that's disappointing. I would like more elbow squish on the left side. The, the layout is pretty good. Oh, and this Camry is gonna wedge right in. That car handled it really, really well, I gotta say. Huh, I still did not press the brake right there. Looking around the interior a little bit more, some cool materials. I like having a USB-A and a USB-C. Good amount of storage around the wireless device charger. A little bit of storage there as well, and apparently a pretty large center console area. Is this Tom? Everybody wave at Tedward. Bye, Tedward. <laughs> Sucker. So I'm really impressed by this. I'm actually going to switch off the camera, do a little bit of driving, and I come back at you. We're probably going to be doing a walk around, and I'll have more of my thoughts. But raw first impressions of the CRV. <laughs> I like it. I'm impressed. Probably should have done my walk around when it was cloudy outside. Now I'm closer to the water in Santa Barbara. Now that we're up here out kind of past the mountain ridge, it's very bright. Not the best environment to show off this car, but I'll show it to you here in the shade and then we'll back it up a little bit. Just kind of want to see some of the striking designs for the new CRV. I think this is the sexiest CRV that they've come out with. The CRV's always been very utilitarian and kind of no nonsense. And this one, you got the chrome bits, you got a little bit more of a longer, wider, sexier look. A little less rugged than maybe some previous CRV buyers are used to and, and kind of looking for, but the black painted wheels, of which I'm not a huge fan, but some people really quite like. I do like the DRLs. The hybrids get this little uh, plasticky silver bit. That looks good. I think the grill looks nice, nicely designed. I think it's a sharp car. In the top level trim, you're getting a powerful lift tailgate that you should be able to kick. Oh, I don't have the key in my pocket. Let's try that. I can grab the key and see if it works. The car's running too. Maybe let's turn that off. Key in my pocket. You walk up to it. You should be able to just simply, there you go. Opens right up. This is supposed to be faster than before. It seems like a, a decent speed. This is one of the things I think is really awesome about the new CRV is the load height. You often hear us talk about load heights. Not only is it remarkably low, I'm about five foot ten, and this is just above my knees. It's kind of at my mid thigh, I suppose. Really easy to load stuff into, but it's also a flat surface, meaning if you're sliding something out, a stroller, a big bag of dog food, you're not gonna have to get over any sort of lip to get it in or out. Underneath here in the hybrid, oh, I do not think this is supposed to open. That, that stays closed. There's probably battery or some sort of power unit under there. A little tiny bit of side storage here on either side. You got your subwoofer for your Bose audio system, of which we're reviewing separately. Take a look in the description for that. Let's fold down the seat. Okay, so they do provide this flap to sort of smooth out, it's actually a plastic flap, smooth out that transition, but you're not getting a flat load surface, so keep that in mind for certain use cases. Power that down. Actually, wait a minute, can you do it? Can you kick it to power it? Let's see. Yep, there it goes, coming back down. The back seat of the CRV is what I think is really quite impressive. You open this up. First of all, look how wide this door opens. That's that's a 90 degree angle. The Topher told me that's very important for putting children in and out of, you know. Oh, there was a Honda bag back here. I don't know. Oh, they gave me goodies and I squished them. I'm sorry, Honda. You gave me popcorners and I squished them. I apologize. It's funny that they think that we're going to go long enough that we're gonna need snacks, but I'll be damned if I'm not gonna eat this crispy snack bar from Annie's. Yum, ooh, kind bars too. See, this is, uh, this is what manufacturers do, folks. They try to butter us up with goodies and uh, 
sometimes it's effective. <laughs> Either way, let's slide that over to the side, take a look at more of this middle seat area. Cool cross stitching in this top level trim, but look how easy it is to get in and out of, you know. I'll move this Annie's crispy bar to my front pocket so I don't squish it even further. I can walk right in. It's almost a, a cool exercise of just being able to slide right in. And I'm remarkably reclined right now, very, very far back. I don't know how this lighting is going to be for you all. Probably horrible, so maybe I'll leave that open. Pull the seat up a little. This is something I don't like. You have to, if you're in the seat and you want to change the, the, the adjustment, there's no support. You're pulling the seat up manually. There's no sort of spring mechanism to help you out. But now, plenty of knee room as a 5'10 person. Flip down armrests with two cup holders and also two bottle holders in the door. That's cute. There's a little CRV icon right there. This should be a nice place to be. It really should be. Two power points for this model. I think the EXL, maybe? EXL and the Sport Touring get the two USB-C ports there, but not in the base trims. No uh, place to put your stuff in the back of the driver's seat, too. Only a map pocket passenger. Look at the front here. It's a nice place to be. I'm going to get in there, fire it up, and move it back a little so that you can see, maybe see the outside of the car a little better. Little different lighting. Car comes to life. Interesting that it went back to 71 degrees, even though I had it set at low before. Okay. Also, I think it reset my driving position, so there must be some sort of smart key system set right now. It's good to know. Big shifter, you can see. A lot of people like having that big sliding shifter rather than the buttons. I like the buttons, but I gotta admit, this one does work pretty well. This beautiful blue paint, this is new for this generation. CRV, I think it looks quite good. Almost got a little bit of a, a grayness to it. But I quite like it. Plastic cladding so that you can do adventures. Yeah, not too bad. All right, let's get back behind the wheel. I just got done hustling the CRV through a section of twisty road back there. I actually caught up to a motorcycle, which I think is pretty impressive. And I'm hoping we get a little bit more twisty road here as well, although the motorcycle seems to be also turning, and unless they're planning on twisting that accelerator a little bit more, I would hope that he pulls over for me. I know your bike is capable of it. The question is, are you capable of it, Mr. Motorcycle? Okay, we have safely passed the bike, and now we're going to open the CRV up a little bit more. This is a very loud section of road, I'm noticing, and the CRV has been very quiet so far this trip, so I think this road is just very beat up. I'm gonna go up here into sport mode and you can hear the annoying active sound control that they have where they pipe in fake noise. Sounds very similar to what you get in the Civics. Even in this hybrid powertrain, it's not exactly a fast car, but I think it's plenty of power and it's plenty of smooth low down power, especially the kind of the torquey lower city driving type stuff. That's what matters in a car like this. I'm not, I'm not gonna fault it at all for not having Whole bunch of straight line speed. In fact, I think it'd be kind of silly if Honda even bothered putting effort into that. But Honda cars always, all right, that's enough. Fortunately, here when you're in normal, how much quieter that is, I'm gonna shift into sport. It gets so much louder when you're in sport mode. And am I catching a Subaru, really? Of course I would catch a Subaru right where the roads get twisty. Yeah. Anyway, I, I'm i always impressed by how well Hondas handle, just, just from a, a casual standpoint. They just have a satisfying feel to the driving, though. The steering weights up nicely, and there's a, there's a solidness and a confidence between in the way that it all handles. Fortunately, if you drive it in normal mode, they've completely eliminated the active sound control. No fake noise coming in. I'm very appreciative of that. I feel like all cars that have that, it's just software. It should be fully defeatable. I'm glad it is in this car. We're coming up on another CRV. Are they going to drive spiritedly? We're going to find out. I think the answer is no. <laughs> uh, all right. Well. I'm glad I got all the spirited driving in for winding road, so 
If I don't get any more here, you can check that video hustling this thing around. But I think they did a really nice job with the, the tuning of everything. I really do. I, I haven't found anything to be disappointed with in this car yet, though. The Bose sound system's a B. You can see the full review of that with the link in the description. I like the gauge cluster. I think the infotainment screen's a little far away. And I'm reaching with my, with my shoulder blades against the seat. I can't quite reach it. I think shorter individuals may have a bit of a tough time with that. Other than that, I've been pretty satisfied. This is one annoyance I have noticed driving throughout the day in the CRV. When you go to shift from park into drive, you oftentimes shift all the way down to B. Now I like driving around in B. It provides extra regen, maximum regeneration, and a little bit more resistance, slows the car down, fills up the battery. But you can't use cruise control when you're in B mode for some reason. So you'll, you'll get on the highway, you're driving around in B, and you go to set the cruise, and so it's unable to do so. So you gotta remember that, oh, shift up into D, and then you can set the cruise. That's, that's a little frustrating. They couldn't have just programmed a cruise to work in B. We're gonna take this chance with a little bit more of a cloudy area, now that we're getting back into Santa Barbara. Took one last look around the car for any of you who felt like couldn't see too well in the last footage. I want to do one last uh, look with a different sort of lighting here along the Pacific Ocean. This blue is looking very nice. Wrap up some of my thoughts with the car as well. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I like it quite a bit. Not the most exciting car, but I do think a lot of what it has to offer should be exciting to you including getting great fuel economy. Oh, he's not in my, my pocket, <laughs> just like the last time. We're gonna look at the cargo area, a little bit better lighting. Listen to how solid this is. Very, very good feeling door. My seats, I'm liking this orange cross stitching. Overall, the materials just feel good. Very minimal hump in the back right here, I noticed as well. Air vents, USB ports. Plenty of space for both adults and children. This doesn't take premium fuel, does it? No, okay. I do like being able to pop that open without using something in the car, though. And then here we are, the front area. Two-way lumbar adjustment seats. We have power for the passenger. Yes, power over on the passenger seat as well. Does it go up and down? No. Okay, so no height adjustment over there. One complaint I have managed to find is that the wireless device charger doesn't hold the phone very well, especially something like this. A little caseless iPhone just slides around, the mini one, and sometimes it charges, sometimes it doesn't. So not super effective there. Other than that, <laughs> this thing has a lot to offer. I should also point out, we don't have cooled seats. And that's not a huge deal to me, but you also don't have a 360 degree camera, and I'm a bit disappointed in that. No panoramic sunroof, but I could take it or leave it. I know some people are gonna want that. But the Honda CRV, it offers a lot. It really, really does. Great fuel economy, great driving feel and, and general dynamics. Most of the features, ton of safety. I'm a big fan and I would just have to choose whether I pony up about 40 grand to get this top level sport touring or if I'd be getting the sport model. But I think it's pretty safe to say I'd be getting the hybrid over the normal motor. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Once we get this back at DMHQ, we'll do a proper highway fuel economy test and another review with Chris. And until then, I'm Charlie from Daily Motor and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.